Nido King has always been one of the most interesting Pokémon. It is one of three fully evolved Poison Ground types, Nido Queen is just the defensive version and Claude Sire is the super defensive version. Nido Queen is a strict downgrade to Nido King, as it loses 9 entire speed. It's also a bit weaker, which doesn't matter all too much but still bad. All of this for a few extra points in defense and special defense. Not a good trade offer. Claude Sire is mixed maxed to the point where using this thing for anything other than defense isn't worth it. It doesn't have any form of offensive ability. Claude Sire is best used defensively, and that brings us back to Nidoking, the best offensive poison ground. For starters, it has a 102 base attack, 81 horsepower, 75 defenses and 85 speed. This doesn't sound impressive at all. The only stat that's even close to being great is the 102 attack stat and the 85 speed, which both are not that great. It has the abilities Poison Point, Rivalry, and Sheer Force. Poison Point activates on contact, on which there is a 30% chance of poisoning the opponent. Rivalry does more and less damage depending on gender, so it is completely useless. Sheer Force is where things get better. Sheer Force is an ability that boosts all moves with a secondary effect such as Sludge Bomb poisoning you. It boosts the damage output by 30%, but removes the secondary effect, so Sludge Bomb will never poison you. Great. Now your Poison Jabs, Fire Punches and Ice Punches are all boosted. After all, shouldn't you use your higher attacking stat? Haha. Ha. Wrong. The Nidoking in question. Some physical moves that Nidoking learns aren't boosted, and miss out on the power boost. Earthquake is Nidoking's strongest stab move, and yet it isn't boosted. Secondary effect alternatives such as Bulldoze simply only get boosted equal to the power of Earthquake. Additionally, all of Nidoking's coverage moves are weak, like really, really weak. All of the elemental punches are notoriously weak. 75 base power is pathetic, and often simply doesn't get the job done. A max attack Jolly Nido King will never KO a Gliscor or a Landorus with Ice Punch, against a 4x weak opponent. Poison Jab is the only move that physical Nido King runs that's even slightly good. Because of this, Nido King was forced to go special. Nido King is now a special attacker. Nido King uses Sheer Force to the fullest with special attacks now. I mentioned earlier that Sheer Force removes the secondary effects on moves, but it also completely removes the recoil from Life Orb, an item that boosts damage by 30% but makes you take 10% damage after you use an attack. With the power boost from Sheer Force, that makes Nido King have a free choice specs and more. Remember how weak Nido King's coverage moves are, while fret not. Nido King has almost every good special attack in the game. For some mysterious reason, Nido King has access to Flamethrower, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, and Surf. It can also use Blizzard, Fire Blast, and Thunder. It has some absolutely vicious stab moves, having both Earth Power and Sludge Wave to use, which both have secondary effects and are both extremely boosted. This makes Nidoking an absolute monster to stop defensively, as it has every single coverage move under the sun to use at its disposal to break a team. Because Nidoking was exiled from Scarlet and Violet, we'll be talking about National Dex, a tier where every generational gimmick and Pokémon are allowed. Typically, a Nidoking set consists of a few moves. Earth Power is mandatory, as it functions as a great stab option that can break through tons of common steels and electrics. The final three moves are your choice however. Sludge Wave is a stronger move to Earth Power that allows it to smack grass types and common fairies. Ice Beam allows it to hit ground types, making it difficult to switch in a ground type revenge killer for the opposing team. It also always destroys Gliscor, Garchomp, and Landorus, very common Pokémon that are all weak to ice. Flamethrower helps against steel types that aren't weak to ground. Notably, it allows you to melt Ferrothorn, which would otherwise be a tough matchup. It also helps out against the occasional Corvikite, Skarmory, and Cartana. Thunderbolt is a nice option that allows you to smack bulky water types. It can be a nice mid-ground for Toxapex, and can secure a kill against things like Pelipper and Gyarados. It also can fry Cook Alamimola, 
shadow ball can help you against bulky psychics and ghosts, but there aren't that many of them to begin with, surf isn't recommended, as it isn't even boosted by sheer force, but can be a midground. As for what nature Nidokane should be, there are only two good options, timid and modest. Timid allows you to comfortably outspeed Pokemon such as Heatron and Drillaboom, but Modest grants you insane breaking potential and does more damage into neutral targets. Also, if you are thinking that Blissey and Chansey completely walled Nidoking you are mistaken. Focus Punch B If you are to give a chad however, superpower works as well. Nidoking can run mixed set too, but they aren't that good and don't play into Nidoking's insane special attacking prowess. With all of this in mind, you can carefully piece together a perfect Nidoking to rip and tear through the enemy team. Team building around Nidoking. Nidoking isn't a defensive behemoth, it's not that much of a hit taker, but can live a hit in a pinch. Nidoking has an immunity to electric, which is great for giving and switching opportunities, and denying volt switch, a very common move. It's also immune to being poisoned, which is handy against more defensive teams. Other than that, there isn't that much defensive use. The typing does help against Tapu Koko, Zamazenta and more, which actually helps it greatly. Nidoking can function as a last ditch check to those guys. Because of Nidoking's defensive problems, it needs teammates that can beat its common answers. Nidoking is not a plug and play Pokemon. You cannot slap it on a team recklessly. It isn't fast enough to outpace the things that can beat it. The notorious Tapu Lele comes in after a kill and always claims a kill without any proper defensive check to it. Because of this, you need defensive Pokemon that can handle these hits. Nidoking doesn't fit well into a hyper-offensive or offense build, as it loves feeding off of well-timed switches and safe pivots. Defensive Pokemon such as Zapdos, Moltres, Iron Crown and Sloking grant easy switches to Nidoking, with Iron Crown synergizing excellently because of its steel defensive typing, letting tank hits easily in the face of Tapu Lele. Additionally, Nidoking likes having offensive teammates that can outspeed and break through the things that outspeed Nidoking. Nidoking, as good as it is, isn't your main damage output. You need other offensive teammates as Nidoking has a lot of problems as a soul attacker. Overall, Nidoking is a Pokemon that needs support, but when it's supported it gets the job done. Piloting Nidoking When all is said and done, and you have a great Nidoking to go off with, it's really then for its time to shine. Fiercely, when Nidoking comes in against an opponent who is slower than it and is weak to one of its moves, it forces them in a deadly scenario. They have a few different options. They could switch another Pokemon slower than it to tank the hit easily, which means they are subjected to another Nidoking assault, or they can pivot in their offensive answer, taking lots of damage. Additionally, they can just stay in and pray that you don't even click the super effective move, or they can stay to sacrifice it, which isn't always the best decision because your team could be super weak to it. Terra also throws a wrench into this game plan, but using Terra is a big commitment and isn't always the right play. As the Nidoking player, you do have options too. You can click moves relatively safely, as the sheer amount of coverage and power you have means that you can just click the super effective move every single time. Additionally, you can predict an opponent sending in their offensive Pokemon, only to be met with a clean cold K, or after you just remove it immediately. Nidoking is a super dangerous moan to be left unchecked, but how do you get it on the field in the first place? Nidoking's lackluster defensive profile, do not use Nidoqueen trust me it's not worth it, leaves lots to be desired, while switching in Nidoking to live a resisted hit can be a worthwhile move, it is better to use a pivoting move to get in, additionally, a good pivot can punish a defensive switch with Nidoking being able to force a K, oh, Nidoking best handles defensive structures that have few things faster than it, allowing Nidoking to have a field day clicking buttons. However, against Hyper Offense and Offense, it's hard to even find a kill as you are outsped and destroyed by the entire team. Although, when you master the power of the four elements, Poison, Earth, Ice and Fire then, only then, shall the reckoning begin.
overall, Nido King, while an extremely deadly wall breaker, is not an easy to slap on Pokemon. For one, Nidoking requires moderate team support and good play to use effectively, and Nidoking suffers greatly in matchups such as Hyper Offense. Nidoking having access to many different moves allows it to be a diverse and powerful threat, often leaving your opponent without anything to do but pray they got a prediction right. This has been Chilkis, your favorite extremely niche Pokemon YouTuber. See ya.